What would drive a successful academic and athlete to risk everything for the sake of reaching the top of Mount Everest? Maria Stridum's fatal attempt to conquer the world's highest peak in the face of harrowing weather conditions and limited oxygen resulted in the deadliest mountain tragedy, leaving us to wonder whether the glory of summiting is worth the cost. Today, we'll look at the deadly mountain tragedy, the death of Maria Stridum. Before diving into this deadly tragedy, first, let's talk about Mount Everest. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world, with a peak elevation of 29,029 feet. It's located in the Himalayas, on the border between Nepal and Tibet. The mountain is named after Sir George Everest, a British surveyor who was instrumental in surveying the Indian subcontinent in the 19th century. Climbing Mount Everest is considered one of the ultimate achievements in mountaineering, and it has drawn adventurous climbers and thrill seekers from around the world for decades. Maria Stridum, an academic and athlete from Australia who is 34 years old, had felt a pull towards athletic competitions since she was a child. She had a penchant for endurance sports and had competed in a number of marathons, ultramarathons, and triathlons. She also held a doctorate in finance and was a lecturer at Monash University in Melbourne. Her ultimate objective was to scale the seven summits, which are the tallest mountains on each of the seven continents. In 2014, she scaled Mount Kilimanjaro, which is located in Tanzania. The following year, she made an attempt to scale Mount Aconcagua, which is located in Argentina, but she was forced to abort the climb due to altitude sickness. The year 2016 was the year that Stridum and her husband, Robert Groppel, decided to attempt climbing Mount Everest. They were part of a group of mountaineers that were led up the world's highest peaks by Seven Summit Treks, a firm that specializes in leading clients to the summit of the world's tallest mountains. The couple put in several months of preparation, during which time they spent time in the mountains of New Zealand and Nepal in order to acclimatize themselves to the high altitude and terrible weather conditions. At the beginning of their trek up Mount Everest, Stridum and Grapel joined a group of mountaineers from all over the world on April 22, 2016, at a location known as Base Camp. They were joined on their journey by a Pasang Sherpa, who would serve as their guide, as well as a number of assistant Sherpas who would assist in carrying their gear and provisions. On April 25th, the group started their ascent, which involved going up through the Kumba Icefall. This is a dangerous stretch of the route that involves the climbers navigating through a maze of crevasses and ice towers. Base Camp is a starting point for climbers who wish to summit Mount Everest. It's located at an altitude of 5,364 meters and serves as a staging area for climbers to acclimatize to the high altitude and prepare for their climb. At this point, climbers organize their gear and supplies and they're briefed on the dangers and challenges of the climb ahead. The Kumba Icefall is a particularly dangerous stretch of the climb that's located between Base Camp and Camp 1. It's considered one of the most hazardous sections of the climb due to the presence of constantly shifting ice towers and deep crevasses. The terrain is unstable and treacherous, and climbers must navigate through the icefall using ladders, ropes, and other safety equipment. The Kumba Icefall is so dangerous that climbers only attempt it during the early morning hours when the ice is more stable. In spite of the risks, the group made significant headway and on April 28th reached Camp 2 at an elevation of 21,000 feet. They stayed there for a day to allow their bodies to adjust to the higher altitude before carrying on to Camp 3, which was located at an elevation of 23,000 feet. However, the weather took a turn for the worst, and now we're facing high winds and heavy snowfall, which will make the climb that much more challenging. Around 10 o'clock at night on May 20th, Stridum and Grapple started their final ascent to the peak, 
departing Camp 4 at an elevation of 26,000 feet. They were part of a larger party of mountaineers who were attempting the same thing, and Pasang Sherpa was their guide. Despite this, the conditions were exceptionally difficult, with temperatures hitting minus 30 degrees Celsius and winds reaching up to 80 miles per hour with gusts. The group had to make its way over a landscape that was covered in deep snow and icy conditions, and the low oxygen levels at that height made it very difficult to breathe. Stridum started to develop severe symptoms of altitude sickness as they ascended higher. It was difficult for her to keep up with the group once she started throwing up and had an ongoing cough because of her illness. Stridum was determined to reach the peak, which was just a few hundred meters away, despite the numerous caution signs that he encountered along the route. On May 21st, at approximately one o'clock in the afternoon, Stridum and Grapple made it to the summit of Mount Everest. They celebrated their success by taking photos and having a party, but their happiness did not last very long. Stridum's condition deteriorated quickly and she passed out in the descent of the mountain. Her condition continued to worsen despite the efforts of Pasang Sherpa who administered oxygen and medication to her in an attempt to revive her. He came to the unpleasant conclusion that the best course of action would be to abandon her together with Grapple, who was also experiencing the effects of altitude sickness. Sherpa assistants working for Stridum made many attempts to bring her down the mountain on their backs, but the adverse weather made it hard to proceed swiftly. They were forced to abandon her body in the end because it was too risky to continue transporting her further down the mountain. The climbing season of 2016 Everest was marked by a number of mishaps and catastrophes, including the passing of Stridum, who was one of several people who passed away while attempting to summit the mountain. Friends and co-workers of Stridum were taken aback when they heard of her passing. They recalled her as a devoted student and athlete who was motivated by the aspiration to test the boundaries of her abilities. Her passing has also sparked significant concerns about the morality of adventure tourism and the perils of engaging in activities that present extreme physical demands. After Stridum passed away, her husband, Robert Groppel, made a public statement about the inhumane conditions that existed on Mount Everest. He said this after Stridum's death. He voiced his disapproval of the absence of regulation in the adventure tourism industry and advocated for higher, more stringent requirements for climbers and guides. Grapple also disclosed that he had experienced frostbite on his hands and feet while climbing, an injury that prompted him to undergo surgery in order to get the damage repaired. The unfortunate passing of Maria Stridum when she was climbing Mount Everest brings to light both the dangers and the potential benefits of engaging in physically taxing endeavors. In spite of the fact that reaching the summit of the highest mountain on the planet is unquestionably a magnificent accomplishment, it's also a perilous and risky endeavor. The lack of regulation in the field of adventure tourism means that climbers are frequently subjected to risks that are beyond tolerable, while the allure of glory and accomplishment might cause them to be oblivious to the hazards that they confront. In the wake of Stridum's passing, there have been calls for more stringent regulation of the adventure tourism business. In addition to calls for increased awareness of the hazards and perils associated with climbing and other extreme sports. It's important to keep in mind that physical challenges come with substantial hazards and responsibilities, despite the fact that they can be an effective way to test our limitations and push ourselves to achieve new levels of success. A painful reminder of the hazards that we face when we seek these tasks, the death of Maria Stridum is a call to action to ensure that these challenges be tackled with care and prudence so that we can avoid tragedies like hers. So, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And remember, stay safe and never stop exploring.